Hi, I'm John Storms, and I am going to do a quick behind-the-scenes tour of this year's 2018 display. So this is kind of the heart and hub of it. So here I have a PC that's running X-Lite Scheduler 64, and I use that most of the time to run the show. I also have right here a uh, Raspberry Pi 2 that is running FPP and I've been playing with it running the show. The advantage to that is that it uh, I can go and make updates uh, on the fly. If I'm actually at home and nearby the computer is actually nice because X64 has some pretty nice features in terms of skipping songs and pausing things and you can kind of cater to show a little bit to the crowd and it's fun. Uh, and then here I have my radio transmitter. It's the Eclipse 4000 mobile black box and I just have it hooked up to the RJ30, the little 35 um, millimeter audio out jack. And when I'm running off the Pi, I hook it up to the to the Pi. So the computer and the Pi are both connected to an Ethernet switch, right? And then I have three other devices hanging off of this. And these are my three Pixel controllers. Okay, so I'm not running any Lightorama software whatsoever. It's just the the X-Lite scheduler and the sequences were written with X-Lite 64 and uh, I do that on a different computer and then I just transfer the uh, the FSEQ files to to this machine so it talks with DMX which is E131 over Ethernet to the three controllers and these are Falcon controllers so I have three controllers one controller drives this side of the yard the tree line the other controller drives the deer. Both of those are Falcon F-16 V3s. And then up there, under here, I have a an F-48. And those are the three controllers. I'm going to start with this guy over here. So this is my Falcon F-16 V3. And these are not the prettiest enclosure jobs, but I did it to get it done and do it quick. I had to kind of slap it together this year. So that's the F-16 V3, and it is on. I let them on all day. It has the Ethernet coming in, and then it has, I'm using all 16 ports. And then here I have two serial output ports, and I'll mention those in a minute. And that's being driven by a 30-watt power supply, which is overkill since I'm only... I'm not actually powering anything off of this guy. Okay, so all the power that I'm using for the various things, I have these little power injection boxes scattered about. And these are in ammo boxes. The F-16 V3, that's in a uh, CG-1500 case. These are just ammo boxes I bought off of Amazon. Come on. So, in here I have a 33 amp waterproof power supply that I pulled this, the top off. It was the cheapest water this power supply for the watts that I found from a, a US render. And then uh, I have it hooked up to a little watt meter, which isn't very accurate. And I had one burn up on me, so I'm going to yank those out for next year. And then I just have a very straightforward power distribution board, which is made by the same guy that, that does the uh, controllers. And all this does is it's just taking that 12 volts and it's splitting it up to multiple outputs. But he also puts fuses on it so that if you something bad happens, the fuses can catch it. And I do have a fan and vent in each. So I got one there, one here, another one here, and another one there. In the front yard, the other thing I got going on is this is basically the main power coming in just from the uh, the outlet so I, I got splitters and I have a you know power strip in there and just to keep it a little bit drier I stuck it in this Tupperware container drill a couple holes in it stick the lid on it and that keeps the major rain out so that's that so then I got the uh, the tree line um, which we switched over to pixels few years back and this is the first year for these trees these trees were bought online at Home Depot and they're all supposed to be six foot but the three in the middle are six foot but measuring it from a different spot I guess but it worked out there was an odd number we put them in the middle 
each tree has 150 pixels. You can go about 100 pixels safely without power injection, about 125. I did 150, so I did have to do power injection. So I just have a little T cable in the middle of each tree and I inject power there. So at the bottom, it's just data coming in and then I power inject in the middle. And at the top, I just have it capped off. And these presents don't do anything. They're just uh, there to kind of help hide the cable mess. Uh, then the tree trunks each have 600 pixels. And I can scroll text and effects and all that sort of thing. And I just wrap those around the trees. I had to cut them and make these custom models to account for the branches at the top. I wanted to make them as big as possible so when the trees grow, there's a little bit of space to move. And, you know, this is the tail end. And then inside, I think there are three power injection points. And I have some metal poles inside to give it some rigidity. But aside from that, it just goes up against the tree. And then the tree itself, just in the canopy, has regular LED lights. So, on the Falcon F16 V3, I had two serial outputs. So one of those serial outputs is used to drive my Lightorama. Each of these bushes have... Uh, regular LED lights, the trees have LED lights, so this light arama controls these bushes. And so the F16, what I do is I have a universe just for the light arama stuff, and I direct that universe to that box, to this F16 V3 controller, and then it goes out on the serial port, and at that point it's straight up light arama, so it goes to this light arama box then to this light arama box and these are just daisy chained together and of course this one controls all the back bushes and then that light arama daisy chains into lost my hat this light arama box and this guy has been up here for years uh, since we moved in I actually had to chip out some uh, wasp, a wasp nest out there this year and of course these are all the wires feeding into it now, the other serial output is used to feed the cactus. I put it on its own serial output because it's pixels. Now, it's only 100 pixels, but just to be safe, I stuck it on its own. And these are old. Next year, I'm going to put new pixels on this one. But this is running the old Lightorama CCB, uh, which is essentially the same thing as the CCRs. Um, and to get that to work, all I had to do was uh, hook it up to the hardware utility and disable macros. And then it controlled the lights just fine. So again, that's hanging off of one of the serial outputs of the uh, Falcon F16 V3. Okay, so now that's the front yard. Okay, a couple other things. Ethernet cables, especially with Lightorama products, uh, they get kicked, they cause a lot of damage. So kind of a poor man's strain relief, I'll wrap it around a, a sprinkler head of a bush so that if it does get kicked it's not the end of the world. I put garbage bags over my uh, controllers. Uh, found that the condensation kind of forms on the inside of the bag and at night nobody really sees them. As far as the other controllers I just stick them straight out in the yard. We've got plenty of rain. Some people go and clean up all their cables so you can't see them. That's not me. As you see I have these guys staked up off the ground. I try to avoid anywhere, keep the cable ends off the ground so they don't ground out and that uh, cause uh, GFCI trip, breakers to trip. So you do that and it really reduces how often that, uh, that occurs. They say it's fine, I, I just have the, I've seen a lot of times after GFCI trips I get by bad triacs or other things happen. Uh, the other thing, the other thing we do, and this helps uh, with takedown, we have a lot of strands going around a tree like this, or that one. At the very end of a string, I'll put some colored zip ties at the end. I don't know if you can see them. You see there's some pink zip ties at the end of that guy. And then over here, see there's an orange one. And I do that so it's easy to find. It really helps with, uh, with taking down. Also in terms of weatherproofing, the other thing I'll do is I'll put um, childproof caps for outlets at the end of the strings to help keep the water out. I don't like the idea of having a permanent seal because then you're trapping the water in, but if you can make it so the water gets in and gets out quickly, but maybe avoid the torrent 
Uh, I think it helps, but I'm not religious about it. And we go over to the side yard. And over here, I have a full team of deer. So I've been deer hunting for a few years because they don't make them like this anymore. These are the good ones. Uh, nice thick gauge uh, wire. So I stripped them of their lights, restored them, or painted them, and then uh, put pixels on them. So excluding Rudolph, each deer has 250 pixels. The sleigh has 200 pixels. And then the reins is just a uh, pixel LED strip. And each one of those has 50 pixels. And then on Rudolph's nose is one incandescent C9. And then uh, I didn't have a Santa, kind of needed a Santa, so we picked one up on sale at, uh, at Target. The windstorm, his head blew off. But man, I can see he's already fading just with one year's sun. So, I run these guys at 60% power, not because I was worried they'd be too bright, but because if otherwise I would have power injection boxes all over the yard. As it is, I have these two power injection boxes and I have all the data coming off of this Falcon F16 V3. It's not a snake skin, is it? No, okay. So let me pop him open. So you'll see it looks just like the other one. And uh, I have a lot of the ports used up. And I have two of these ports powered. The two powered ports are for the reins. Everything else is getting its power off of these power injection boxes. This one's just like the other one. Oops, tripping over my wires. This one has two power supplies. Um, just so I can you know, get enough power without overloading them. You want to be careful when you're doing your, your math. You don't want to overload the power supplies because they get hot. Hot makes fire. And fire makes for a lot of fun. And then I got some presents here too. See, she's taping me taping my show. I'm not a nerd. People like this. I'm taping you. Now they're going to see you. Is it time to go to lunch? Yeah. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay. So anyway, that's the deer. And then we have our listen to our light sign. And of course, the other thing we put on the house this year is we uh, finally got all of our pixel snowflakes, and there's something like 30, 33 of them. Okay, so a lot of people ask how we mount the snowflakes to the house. So over here, and first of all, I'm not in the front of my house. I'm over on the side of my house that nobody cares about, over by the over by the air conditioners. This is where I try stuff out before we try it out on the house. So here, this is uh, what we do. So I take a uh, an electric drill with a masonry uh, drill bit and I drill right into the stone. I put in a number eight uh, anchor and then I put one of these uh, screw eyes. And so there's a screw, you just screw it right in and uh, that's that's my concho. And then I'll just zip tie or use wire to attach things. Now usually I don't stick it right into the face of the stone like this. I did it for a test. Usually what I'll do is on a brick like this, I'll put it in right here at the top and drill in. That way from below, if I ever take out the gancho and just leave the hole, you won't be able to see it from the street. And then if I'm worried about resell, I can just pop these guys out with a pair of pliers and then uh, fill it in with toothpaste or something so nobody can tell. Um, so yeah, so we use these gonchos to hold things up. And honestly, from the from the driveway in the street, you can't see it. I've added ton, tons of these things and my wife hasn't even noticed. Okay, so here you can see how the snowflakes are attached. So I use a uh, zip tie on top and I got one of those zip ties that has a, I think it's a cable guard or something, but anyway, it has the extra little loop, which made it really nice. And I zipped it through with the bulb. I was doing the thing where you have the black piece of uh, pixel strip on the back and hung from that, but that was putting pressure on the bulb itself and I didn't like it. So anyway, I stuck it on there, got a little hook so it's a little easier to toss on and off. And then I got some twine holding it to the bottom, put another one of these at the bottom. And then I have, I my shadows my own. then I have a gancho at the bottom. So that way everything's there. It has a little bit of give, it'll move a, lot, a little bit, but not a, not a ton. And that's enough to kind of give you a break from the wind. And just here's a closer view of what's going on underneath. So that is a differential board, 
whole bunch of wires going into a Lightarama that won't be there next year. And then this is another differential. So I have two differentials up here. And then that is the F40, the Falcon F48, another power strip, and then runs along here and down to the bushes. So yes, I highly recommend everybody should have a pergola. And I just got some of these uh, cobalt strips from Lowe's and then they have these little uh, shelves that just snap into place and I put the shelves wherever I want. And I got one over here too. See, and I stuck that up there and then I take it down when it's not Christmas so nobody can see. But um, yeah, this one actually caught fire so I gotta come up with a little bit better solution because that's my kids room right above it. So, and of course there's the cactus. Cactus is in dire need of an overhaul. It's starting to rust out pretty bad. We have the, and there's 48 pixels in each, and we have those chained together. And then we have the older snowflake, I mean uh, wreaths, 125 on the big ones, 75 on the little ones. And then we have all these Phillips 42 inch snowflakes, which having baked in the sun for many years are just as brittle as glass. So those are going away next year. Now controlling pretty much everything on the house is that F48. And you can't see it because I got it up there and it's in a plastic bag. But the F48 receives all the information for the house and then it distributes it to these uh, differential boxes. It's called these differential receivers. And I have eight of those. I have one there. I have one up there. I have one here. Two on the roof, which are, it's a metal roof, so they're held on by magnets. And then I have one here, one there. No, no, that's an old CMB 24D that's not running. One there, and then one there. So there are a total of eight of those. And this one here, very simply, the power comes in. I mean, the, uh, the signal comes in here. It's hooked up to a power supply. This is just a 20 uh, amp power supply. And then this differential board breaks it out to two, two ports. And off of those ports, you can have up to hundreds of pixels. Um, I try to keep it under 600 just so that they can all use the same power supply. So they have the same reference ground. But I think you can go up to over a thousand. But anyway, I have eight of those scattered around the yard. Um, makes it really nice for a setup where, you know, not everything's in the same place. Now there's a light -a box here. And there's a light -a box up under the pergola. And these are off of the F48. F48 also has some serial outputs. Now I forgot over here on the side yard, I also have this Lightarama box and it's only controlling I think four or five channels. Um, but you know, for the AC channels I still need it. And it chains off of the, the Falcons real nice. So yeah. So in a nutshell, that is the whole display. The snowflakes are from um, Boscoyo Studios, and I think that is it. Then for everything you see on the roof, I just use uh, plastic clips. These hook onto the gutters, but for the snowflakes that are laying on the roof, they're also there, and then I just, these are just jammed under the, uh, the shingles. And um, I kind of like these. I got these at Target a few years back, bought them, enough of them to last me my, the rest of my life. But yeah, just any, any old plastic clip tends to do pretty good. Then we also get a lot of wind in Texas. So what I do is I use fishing line to secure the display. So I use this to hang a lot of things from the gonchos. But then what I'll do is I'll take fishing line and I'll zip it back and forth all over the display as many times as I, uh, as I can. And then, you know, tie it taut. And that keeps all the snowflakes from bouncing up against the house and each other. Uh, holds them pretty secure. I also secure the snowflakes from the top and the bottom uh, to to avoid them flapping around, especially those core plast snowflakes without uh, some sort of thing to secure them. They would be uh, all over the place. So this is just some fishing line. I think I have... Oh, my eyes aren't good enough. Anyway, it's way overkill for what it needs to be. Uh, the only thing is you got to be careful on tying it because uh, you got to tie good knots or else it will untie itself. So. Yep, and of course I got some handy dandy caution tape, you know, if I'm doing shows, I can throw that out there. I got my cones, 
so I can block off the driveway.